Thank you. Okay, so we're ready for other um, association. This is a new one, and this is CIPASUR. That's the Association of the South America. And we have first Dr. Shoshina Falciani with comparative effectiveness of telesimulation versus a standard simulation for MIS essential skills training. And this is a retrospective study that aimed to compare the effectiveness of telesimulation versus a standard simulation program for essential skills training. Second, we have Dr. Maria Soledad Jada Valdivia from Hospital Luis Calvo Maquena in Santiago, Chile, with the work the immunohistochemical staining CD56 is useful in the diagnosis of biliary attrition. So this is a study that aimed to evaluate the accuracy of CD56 to diagnose patients with biliary attrition. And last but not least, we have Dr. Maria Marcela Bailes, a pediatric surgeon also from Garohan Children's Hospital with the presentation Gonorrheal Tumor Development in 46XX DSD Patients. This is a retrospective study that aimed to report the histological characteristics and immunoexpression patterns of gonorrheal parenchyma in patients with 46XX testicular and ovotesticular DSD. So with those three presentations being the best from CIPASUR, now it's time to start the poll. struggling here the polls are going crazy uh i th i th i think just before we the blue one. man it's going crazy guys here uh i think at the last split second um we were about to announce uh immunohistochemical but at the last second it looks like comparative effectiveness of telesimulation is now winning okay so <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah. stop the poll <laughs> and we are going to see then the Comparative effectiveness of telesimulation versus standard simulation for MIS essential skills training. Comparative effectiveness of telesimulation versus standard simulation for minimal invasive surgery essential skills training. Experience in a pediatric surgical simulation center from Garahan Children's Hospital, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Nothing to disclose. In-person proctor trainee simulation-based education had been our standard choice for MIS skills training programs development since 2012. In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and social distance protocols, we adapted the curricula to a telesimulation essential skills training model, which was reported in IPEC 2021. The aim of this presentation is to evaluate the comparative effectiveness of our telesimulation versus standard simulation for MIS essential skills training. Both standard and teleessential skills training model included academic lectures, tutorials for ergonomics, and seven performance tasks. The hands-on practice was scheduled into two sessions of three hours. We randomly selected 20 participants' assessments from different institutions for each group. The group had access to all the content through an online campus and completed their hands-on practice with a proctor through a virtual meeting platform. 
S group had attended conferences and hands-on practice at the simulation center with an on-site proctor. Both groups had the same educators giving summative feedback and debriefing. The assess tasks were three, circle cutting pattern, extracorporeal rudder knot and intracorporeal square knot. For each task, initial score adapted from goals and time and final score and time were registered. Data was analyzed with the RStudio software program. At precision cutting, we observe a significant improvement in the score as well as a significant decrease in time between the initial and final assessments independently for T and S groups. When comparing the achieved progress between both groups, there were no statistical significant differences between T and S groups. We observe a similar pattern for the extracorporeal rudder knot task, showing a considerable and almost parallel progress in the initial and final assessments for both T and S groups. And at the square knot task, the result structures repeated from the improvement of the score and decrease in time. The comparative outcomes were relatively symmetric for T and S group after practice. For discussion, we observed statistically significant improvements in the scores and decrease in times for all the assess tasks in T and S groups. The comparative progression observed in T and S groups were also effective and accounted almost parallelly. Data analysis showed that close performance could be achieved with both strategies. This may support and highlight the capability of telesimulation to provide educational benefit and MIS essentials skills training to learners who didn't have direct access to on-site simulation resources within a proctor training program. Thank you. All right, we're back. Um, I love the, the variety of the different presentations we have today. This is really great. Um, so uh, I know that the presenters are, I think they're coming from a case and they're running to their computer. So they may make it, but if not, we can talk about this. Um, we were very fortunate to bring Cecilia here to Cincinnati for a couple of years as she's introduced us to this concept of telesimulation. Um, I think that personally it's great when not only you may not have the simulation, the simulation resources, but you may not also even have an expert mentor. Uh, and this allows you to learn from someone who may not live in your city uh, and also internationally. So this has been really, really cool to, to do. And I know with IPEG, um, we did that during the, the pandemic. Um, I guess, you know, Cecilia, given your experience, you and I were talking at the break. And this is for, for low fidelity. Low fidelity, yeah. What are your thoughts on high fidelity? Well, I think it's a little bit more complicated to do it in high fidelity because um, the thing you rely on when you do tell simulations is that you can get things that they're going to simulate with to their houses. Yeah. So okay. high fidelity maybe sometimes requires, I don't know, a pump to uh, make the lungs breathe or so, things like that. So I think it's possible, but we are not quite there uh, to do a tell simulation for high fidelity. But um, I think that low fidelity gives you a lot of um, things. Like you can train a lot with that, and and so it's. And really let me explain useful. what we're talking about when we say high fidelity and low fidelity. There's basically two kind of training models. One is practicing a skill of movement, uh, a peg to one peg to another, cutting, sewing. Uh, those are the low fidelity skills that simulation is very good for. Some people debate about the role of simulation in high fidelity, which is where you have a replica of the actual tissue where you're trying to simulate an esophageal atresia or a duodenal yeah. atresia repair. And not only do we question the role of simulation, but for sure telesimulation, and as you're mentioning, sending this to the world may not be so possible. Yeah, I think it's possible, but I think um, it's not quite there yet. There are multiple... Um, 
places developing new the things like this. So I think that uh, it will get there soon. Okay. Um, and and we're knowing new stuff released like uh, in different parts of the world actually. Um, so I think we are getting there because um, you know we are missing the haptics or receiving things yeah. and. Maybe VR has to do with that. Maybe, I don't know, AI. We, we can, like, we are learning stuff. Um, so right now it's a developing yep. market. <laughs> Tony, Ellen, Brittany, comments? Yeah, I don't have much to add. I was expecting that simulation would be better than telesimulation. So it was nice to see that it wasn't. It was kind of an interesting concept and a well-studied paper. Well, Tony, you know, imagine this. You're at your hospital. You might be have very skilled surgeons, but they may not necessarily be great at teaching techniques. There are people at these courses that have done this over and over. I know that I'm not going to be nearly as good at teaching uh, these these courses as Vasily, who does it all the time. I might get frustrated and say, "You you suck," <laughs> and you know, Cecilia will will do it. So it's good to have to not limit your teachers to just those that live in the same building. So yeah, and, and, and it also gives you the advantage of maybe taking that model home and to do some stuff there. Because maybe I know when you're in residency or in fellowship, you're all the time in your work, but when you're out, you may have some time home and it's good to have maybe an hour a week to do your stuff. Yeah. Remember? All right. I think we should uh move on to the next presentation. Oh hey Marcella, we're sorry. Hi. 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 That's right. Thanks for joining. We we loved your paper. Uh, a lot of good discussion. No, I think I, I was I was presenting the other paper. But I know. I am the mentor and the author of this paper because I was representing the endocrinologists in the other paper. I'm sorry. No. Uh, yeah. I I want I, Georgina is on call today and she's having trouble now. So uh, thank you for the votes. And uh, we are very glad because of pandemia, we tried to develop this kind of essential way of training. And we have been ready to, to show the effectiveness and the comparative effectiveness. And because it, it has to be like that, even we were sure we needed to have data to prove that. It is a very low cost way because you use trainers that you can send as a toy. You don't need fancy stuff. You can use an iPad or, it, I'm sorry for the brand, a, a tablet or a phone. But the worst part is to find the educators and to do the communication effectively. So I, I, I always want to, you know, <laughs> Tell everyone that you don't need to underestimate the essentials because doing this is not, it's, it is low fidelity, but doing a very good intracorporeal suturing in a very small space will translate to a high fidelity model of a newborn. So it is very nice that you can do this before arranging an advanced course and you can work online in different parts of the world. So I, I think I encourage everyone just to start doing, and we are willing to, you know, to share with anyone who, who is willing to do it. Well, that's my message. Thank you, thank you, Marcella. Thanks for stepping in for Georgina. Um, and I think the work you're doing is, is, is fantastic. Thank you, uh, and it's great to see you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you in the final round. All right, thank you.